Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things and surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony. And as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune-telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. 
But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the the Lord to him and to all who were in his household. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he said, then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the hands be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. The heavens declare his righteousness. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. The Lord loves those who hate evil. Light has sprung up for the righteous. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. A reading from the Revelation to John. At the end of the visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let everyone who hears say, come. And let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. 
The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their word, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you have loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It took me a long time this week to remember the name Alan Kurdi. If it doesn't ring a bell for you, this name, it's okay, you probably haven't heard it in seven years. It is the name of a two-year-old Kurdish Syrian boy who washed up on the shore of Turkey after the boat that he and his mother and his brother were in capsized. The picture of his body on the beach drowned captured the world's imagination for a moment, signifying all of the terror and horror of those fleeing the war in Syria. And then we moved on to the next thing. And then the next thing. And the next thing. And the next shooting. And the next massacre. And on and on until this week we got to Uvalde. Having just a week before been talking about Buffalo. And now we barely remember Buffalo. And maybe in two weeks, the names and faces of the children and teachers who died in Uvalde will equally be supplanted by some other horror. Do we remember the names of anyone who died in Parkland? Anyone who died in the Orlando nightclub shooting? any of the other hundreds of shootings that have happened in the United States, any of the other of hundreds of acts of anger and aggression and fear that have killed people in the last few years. We've gotten to the point where the media, when it covers things like this week's events in Uvalde, say it's the worst mass shooting since not ever, not the worst mass shooting this century, not the worst mass shooting that's ever happened in the United States, because that's not a thing. For Uvalde, it's the worst mass shooting at an elementary school since 2012 in Sandy Hook. Right, 10 years. The death of 19 children, elementary aged children is simply the worst thing that's happened, the worst mass shooting in an elementary school that's happened in 10 years. That's where we're at. And, and on a week like this week, it's tempting to stand up here and read the names of those who have died. It's tempting for me to try and remember their names, but I'm afraid that just like those who died in Parkland and just like those who died in Orlando and just like those who have died in so many other shootings that I will forget their names even if I read them this morning that I will not be able to remember them because there will be something else and in the midst of all of this it's hard to imagine that the gospel that even the gospel can give us good news this week. And I have to admit that the first time I looked at the gospel that was appointed for this Sunday after the, it, the events of on Tuesday in Texas, I thought, how is this the bulwark? How is this the good news that we need? And it took me a while to see it. It took me a while to understand what Jesus is saying this morning because it's a little complex. Partly it's because we're reading a translation of Greek and Greek doesn't believe in the period. They don't have a period, they just have commas. Periods go into paragraphs in Greek. And so when you translate it, you just get run on sentence after run on sentence. That's the problem with reading a lot of Paul, is that Paul gets dense because he thinks in these long lines. And Jesus in John's gospel also thinks in these 
long, complex, comma-separated thoughts like this morning's gospel. But if you take this morning's gospel and you work through it all the way down, what you find is that Jesus' prayer for the disciples this morning, in this morning's gospel, which comes from the Last Supper, the end of the Last Supper. Remember, in John's gospel, Jesus' soliloquy at the Last Supper, because that's the only word I can think of for, for taking for it, takes from chapter 14 to chapter 17. And the whole of chapter 17 is one single prayer that Jesus prays for the disciples. And in the midst of that, we have this morning's gospel, where Jesus prays for the disciples, not just the ones gathered around him in the room, not just for those who are physically present with him in that moment, but for all disciples, for those not just who are present, but for those who will hear the story they tell, who will hear the good news from them, and who will take the good news to the next, and will take the good news to the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation. This prayer, Jesus says, is for all of them. And the prayer is that they may dwell in God's love. That they may accept and dwell in the love that is between God and Jesus and the Spirit. And that love, which is God's love, may so bind them together with God and Jesus and with each other that they may be one. Because Jesus believes the gospel gives witness to and the whole of the Bible says that God's love is powerful. In the very beginning, it is God's love that creates the world. It is God's love that causes God to speak the worlds that causes the world to become a thing. Not just unordered chaos in the water, but actual light and land and sea and animals and people. It is God's love that causes him to take interest in Abram and Sarai. It is God's love that causes him to hear the wailing of the people of Israel and Egypt. It is God's love that causes him to send the prophets to remind the people of what God's love looks like in the care for the widow and the orphan, the call to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. And it is ultimately God's love that sends Jesus to live and die and rise again as one of us. And Jesus' prayer in this morning's gospel is that love may be in us. That love that comes from God that changes the world in big and small ways might be in us as well. And maybe that's all well and good. And maybe that love is all powerful and created the world. But sometimes I wonder where it is now in this week. How do we see it? The Apostle Paul tells us in one of his epistles that nothing can separate us from this love. And he goes on to list all of the things in heaven and earth that would try to separate us. Governments, angels, archangels, principalities, powers, demons, animals, whatever. Earthquake, fire, flood. None of that, Paul says, can separate us from the love of God. And with all due respect to Paul, I think he forgot something. Us. Ourselves. Because this love that Jesus prays for, this love that makes the world go round, this love that, by, that can bind us all together, that has the possibility of changing the whole world, is a choice. It is not forced on us that we can turn away from it, that we can choose power or safety or fear or any of the other emotions that we feel instead of love. God's love 
is a choice. And to choose it is not something we do once. It's something we do again and again. And it's not just the warm feeling that comes to us at times when we don't expect it. As John Wesley said, feeling our hearts strangely warmed. God's love is that partly. It's not less than that. But it is certainly more than that. Because once we choose God's love, once we choose to live in it, to accept it, and to reflect it into the world, like tiny moons reflecting the sun's light, once we choose to reflect God's love, we have to go out and choose it in our lives again and again and again and again. Even as the world bumps and cascades and tumbles from tragedy to tragedy sometimes. Day by day, it feels like. And it can cause us to question in our hearts, what is the point? What is the point of this? This this love that I reflect of God that I choose every day and choose to live out into the world it is one drop in an ocean of sadness. What is the point? I can't change things with God's love. My living out God's love in the world doesn't change anything. And if we think that, we're right. Because none of us with our one drop of God's love, with our little portion of God's love that we can hold within us, can change the world. It's not our job to do so. We are not God's superheroes in the world. Marvel is not going to write a comic book about our actions changing the world for God's love. But that one drop of love that is our reflection in the world every day can do something. I grew up in Montana, and one of the things that we would do every other year at about this time when I was in elementary school was we would get on a bus and go about an hour's drive outside of town to uh, a place called the Lewis and Clark Cavern. There's natural caverns in the middle of Montana carved 20 feet below the earth by water. And they would bring us in and they would show us great stalactites and stalagmites and rivers under the earth. And they would point to all of it, these great cavernous halls of light and dark and crystal and sculpture and say, do you know how all of this was made? One drop at a time. One drop after drop after drop carved these caverns, changed these rocks, drew out these stalactites, drew up these stalagmites, drop after drop after drop, the water beat the rock. The love of God within us is one drop. But God's plan is that that drop, drop after drop, dripping slowly one after the other again and again and again, beats against the rock of sorrow and tragedy that the world seems to hold within it, digging down into it so that the water can get in and crack it open from the inside in a moment after drop, after drop, after drop. God's love is patient. It cannot change the tragedy that happens. It cannot take it away and make it as if it didn't exist, but God's love promises that beyond that tragedy is the steady drop, 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 of love, 
again and again and again, unerring, unfailing, happening every second. Drop after drop after drop. If we choose, we can contribute to that steady stream trickling down into the rocks to create a new reality. As God loves, God's love continues to fall all around us. If we choose to embrace this love and this action, then we can make this kingdom that Jesus speaks about where, where we are bound together with the saints and the disciples and Jesus and God in a world very different from this one, but the same. This world but transformed into a place where there is neither sighing nor crying. In a place where each of these names that we can no longer remember because the list has gotten so long is not forgotten. That each name is known and each person is there because their name was always in God's heart. Even when we could not hold them in ours, God's love was faithful to them even if we could not remember them. Because God's love has been constant, dripping down into the world, slowly transforming it and us into a new world where there is neither sighing nor crying, but life everlasting. That is our hope and our charge this morning. As we remember that Jesus after his resurrection, went to sit by God to remind him of us and of love and of the need always to choose that love drop after drop after drop that will change the world and hopefully redeem it as well. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In, pre in peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Greg, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray especially for those who need healing. Judy. Kathy, Kathy, Ginny, Scott, Sharon, Jean, Daryl, Adrian, Karen, Iola, Don, Devon and family, John, Joe, and Helen. For our own needs and those of others, for those in the armed forces and their families, for the welfare of the world, especially all victims of violence, those suffering in the conflict in Ukraine, those suffering in the Holy Land, for those in Buffalo, Laguna Woods, and Uvalde. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for those celebrating the anniversary of their birth, especially Deb, for those celebrating the anniversary of their marriage, and for those celebrating the anniversary of their baptism. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for Ilsa, Sue, Ivan, and Max. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. We bless you. We give thanks to you. And we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Welcome to all. We're glad you're here with us this morning. If you are visiting, you're very welcome. Uh, whether you are here in person or on the stream, uh, it's wonderful to have you. I hope you'll take a minute. Uh, if you are here in person, introduce yourself at the back after the service. If you are online, please let, it, let me know by sending me an email, rector at redeemer-kenmore.org. Uh, introduce yourself that way. Either way you introduce yourself, we'd love to get to know you better and tell you more about the Church of the Redeemer. A few announcements this morning. This morning is the last church school meeting uh, of the program year. Uh, so church school is uh, our children's programming uh, for children from three to about third grade. Uh, they meet, they've been meeting via Zoom for two, we've been meeting via Zoom for two years, and today will be the last class until the fall. Uh, it is at 11.30, and if you need the Zoom link, you can email me, rector at redeemer dash Kenmore dot org to get it. Please try to email by about 1120 so I have time to send it to you after this service. Um, adult education does continue today. It will take, be taking next week off, but it does continue today at noon. We are continuing to study Revel the book of the Revelation to John. We're in chapter 19, uh, but don't feel like you need to have been in previous classes to join this one. Uh, all are welcome. It is at noon, again at noon, and also on Zoom, and you can get the link by emailing, that's right, you guessed it, rector at redeemer-kenmore.org. Again, try to email before 1150 so that I have time to send it back to you, send the link to you before class starts. Uh, very importantly, next Sunday is the first rehearsal after the 10 o'clock service for our Trinity Sunday Choir. We are trying this thing throughout the summer while we are in our interim period in our music program of having uh, sort of ad hoc drop-in choirs. So the next uh, ad hoc drop-in choir will be on Trinity Sunday, which is the um, brain math, 12th, I think that's right, 12th, yes, 12th of June. Uh, Trinity Sunday, the 12th of June, will be the choir uh, performance uh, will, as part of the liturgy at 10 o'clock. Uh, rehearsals for that will be directly after this service, 10 o'clock next Sunday, and at 9 o'clock on Trinity Sunday, the 12th, here in the church. If you'd like to join, you're very welcome. We hope you will um, join, even if you've never been in choir before. Remember, the, the Bible says to make a joyful noise. It doesn't say anything about a tuneful noise. Uh, I want to thank very much John Patch, our guest organist, who's filling in this week. Thank you very much for all your hard work getting ready for this. And to let you know that uh, there will be a uh, substitute priest next week here at the church uh, while I am away uh, for a birthday trip with my family. There are lots of other announcements in the bulletin. I hope you will read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest it. And if you are not already subscribed, I hope that you will subscribe to our online e-newsletter to the font. You can do so on our website, redeemer-kenmar.org. There at the very top, um, there, there is a link to subscribe to our e-newsletter. I hope you will do that so you can know everything that's going on 
at the Church of the Redeemer and that we will see you again very soon. Now, one more wonderful hymn before we finish our worship today. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.